the Japanese occupation of Malaya. For three and a half years, from 1942 to 1945, the Japanese military occupied the Malay Peninsula, a region that included modern-day Malaysia and Singapore. This period of history was marked by brutality, suffering, and the loss of countless lives. But it was also a time of resistance, courage, and the forging of new identities. The Japanese occupation of Malaya left an indelible mark on the region and its people, shaping the political, social, and cultural landscape for decades to come. But why did they do this? Let's find out. Welcome to History Declassified. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to ensure you never miss an update on all the fascinating facts related to war in the Pacific. The night of December 7th, 1941 was a fateful one for the world as Japan launched a surprise attack on the US naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. But for the people of Malaya, the nightmare was just beginning. Just hours later, in the early hours of December the 8th, Japanese troops landed at Padang Pak Amat Beach in Kota Baru, triggering a ferocious battle with the British Indian Army that marked the official start of the Pacific War and the beginning of the Japanese occupation of Malaya. The invading forces quickly established a foothold on the peninsula, occupying strategic locations including Kota Baru Airport, Sungai Patani, Butterworth and Alor Star Airports. They were aided by their superior military tactics and the element of surprise, catching the British forces off guard and quickly gaining ground. Japanese soldiers landing at Kotabaru split into two separate forces, with one moving down the east coast towards Kuantan and the other heading southwards towards the Perak River. The following days saw intense fighting as the Japanese forces advanced further into Malaya. On December the 11th, they started bombing Penang, causing chaos and destruction in the island city. Jitra and Alor Star fell to the invaders on December the 12th, and the British were forced to retreat southwards, abandoning key strategic locations one by one. On December the 16th, the British finally left Penang to the Japanese, who occupied it on December the 19th, cementing their control over the region. The Japanese onslaught continued unabated as they advanced southwards into Malaya, capturing one town after another with alarming speed. On December the 26th, they seized the city of Ipo, dealing a severe blow to British defences. The British forces put up fierce resistance in the Battle of Kampa, which lasted three gruelling days and nights between December the 30th, 1941 and January the 2nd, 1942. But despite their bravery, they were eventually forced to retreat once again, as the Japanese continued their relentless push toward the capital. On January the 7th, 1942, the situation became even more dire for the British, as two brigades of the 11th Indian Infantry Division were defeated in the Battle of Slim River. With this victory, the Japanese army was able to make easy passage to Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaya. Panic spread throughout the city as people scrambled to evacuate before the Japanese arrived, but it was all in vain, as the Japanese captured the city on January the 13th, 1942, bringing the entire peninsula under their control. The fall of Kuala Lumpur was a devastating blow for the British and their allies, and marked the beginning of the end of their resistance in Malaya. With the Japanese now in firm control of the region, the British forces were forced to retreat southwards to Johor, abandoning the capital and leaving the local population to face the full force of the occupier's wrath. The British established a defensive line in North Johor, with Indian and Australian forces stationed along it. However, the Japanese quickly advanced, defeating the 45th Indian Brigade and forcing the Australians to retreat to Sagamat. Despite efforts by the 219th and 229th Battalions, the Johor defensive line collapsed, and the Allies had to retreat across the Johor Causeway to Singapore. By January the 31st, 1942, the Japanese had taken control of the entire Malayan Peninsula. As the Japanese prepared to occupy territories during World War II, they developed a set of principles for their administration. In February 1941, Colonel Obata Noboyoshi and Lieutenant Colonels Otoji Nishimura and Seijiro Tofuku outlined the five key principles. Obtaining vital materials for national defense, restoring law and order, ensuring self-sufficiency for troops in occupied territories, respecting established local organizations and customs, and avoiding hasty discussions about future sovereignty. 
To implement this policy in Malaya, the Japanese army took direct control of the Straits settlements. While the Federated Malay States and Johor remained autonomous protectorates under their sultans, meanwhile, the four northern states were slated to eventually return to Thai rule. Once occupied, Malaya was placed under the Malay Military Administration, Malay Gunsei Kumbu, of the Imperial Japanese Army. Colonel Watanabe Wataru served as the executive officer and served as the chief of general affairs for the 25th Army. Wataru was in charge of carrying out the occupation policies. Due to their support for mainland China against the Japanese, he had a particularly extreme viewpoint and treated the Chinese particularly harshly. Because of their cooperation, Malays and Indians were treated more tolerantly. Colonel Wataru was a man of unshakable convictions. He believed that the British had corrupted the native people of Malaya with their hedonistic and materialistic way of life, and that the only way to bring them back to the right path was through physical and spiritual training, as well as education. In his view, the people of Malaya had to be willing to endure hardship, and even sacrifice their lives, if necessary, to achieve the grand vision of Haku Ichu, the whole world under one roof, and the greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. However, as the war situation deteriorated and the Japanese realised they needed the cooperation of the entire population, Wataru was replaced by Major General Masuzo Fujimuro in March 1943. Under Fujimuro's leadership, the Japanese authorities gradually lifted the repressive policies towards the Chinese and formed advisory councils to engage with the local communities. One notable effort was made by Colonel Hamada Hiroshi, who established a public reading room in March 1944 to foster discussions with Chinese community leaders and youths. This marked a significant departure from the earlier hardline approach, and a recognition that building trust and cooperation was crucial to achieving their goals. On August 15th, 1945, Emperor Hirohito of Japan gave a recorded radio address to the Empire, announcing that they had accepted the terms for ending the war that the Allies had set down in the Potsdam Declaration. This news was met with celebrations in many parts of the world, including in Malaya. In the aftermath of the announcement, British B-24 and Mosquito bombers were dispatched to conduct reconnaissance and leaflet drops over Malayan cities. The leaflets were designed to inform the local population of the Japanese surrender and to urge them to cooperate with the Allied forces. However, one Mosquito bomber encountered engine problems and was forced to land at the Japanese-held Sungai Besi aerodrome near Kuala Lumpur. The situation could have turned dangerous, but to the surprise of the British aircrew, the Japanese provided them with assistance and ensured their safety until they were picked up by another Mosquito. This incident was a rare moment of goodwill and cooperation between former enemies, and it was a testament to the professionalism and humanity of both the Japanese and British forces. Operation Jurist was a crucial military mission in Malaya during World War II. Penang was liberated from Japanese rule on September 2, 1945, followed by Singapore on September 12. British forces then reached Kuala Lumpur, where the commander of the 29th Army surrendered on September 13. The British military administration was installed in Kuala Lumpur on September 12, and the Malaya surrender document was signed soon after. The MP AJA Army was later disbanded. Overall, Operation Juris played a vital role in ending the Japanese occupation in Malaya. Following the end of the war, Japanese troops who were still in Malaya, Java, Sumatra and Burma were transferred to Rempang and Galang Islands. The islands were soon flooded with more than 200,000 Japanese troops under the supervision of five British officers as part of Operation Exodus. Lieutenant General Ishiguro was put in charge of the island, which the Japanese renamed Sake. Interestingly, while awaiting repatriation to Japan, a newspaper reported that some Kampaitai troops were mistreated by their own compatriots. The last of the troops left the islands in July 1946. In addition to the troops, around 7,000 Japanese civilians who had lived in Malaya during the occupation were also repatriated to Japan. Also, members of the Kempaitai and camp guards were treated as prisoners of war due to their brutal treatment of military personnel and civilians. The war crimes trials that followed were a significant moment in history, holding those responsible for their actions accountable for the atrocities committed during the war. One of the trials held in 1947 resulted in the conviction of seven Japanese officers. Two were executed, including Lieutenant Colonel Masayuki Oishi, commander of two field Kempaitai, and Lieutenant General Saburo Kawamura, 
Meanwhile, Lieutenant General Takuma Nishimura, who received a life sentence, was later found guilty of the Parrot Sulong massacre by an Australian court and subsequently executed. Captain Higashikawa, head of the Penang branch of the Kempaitai, faced execution for his brutal actions, prompting Captain S. Hidaka, the Penang Chief of Staff for the Imperial Japanese Navy, to raise the matter with the Lieutenant General Ishiguro. Higashikawa was subsequently replaced by Captain Tarata, and the trials continued to hold those accountable for the war crimes committed during the occupation of Malaya. Cemeteries were created for Malayan and Allied military personnel at Kranji War Cemetery in Singapore and Taiping War Cemetery in Bukit Larut. The National Monument in Kuala Lumpur serves as the main national war memorial and commemorates those who served in both World War II and the Malayan Emergency. An expedition was mounted in October 1946 by the Number no. 46 War Graves Unit to recover and rebury all personnel they could locate.